Hello everybody, how you doing? I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for this video because, as you can tell by the title, myself and Zara are hosting an afternoon tea indoors. For ourselves. For ourselves. Because we are extra and that is something that we absolutely 100% think well, is necessary. Yeah, and we love afternoon tea. We do, we and do. And we can't go out for one. So, we bring, so it bring it home. home. Exactly. We've spent the past, well, we haven't really scoured for things. We did a little bit of Googling and done some online shopping and we've had a teapot and an afternoon tea stand arrive. So if you do want to make along at home and host your own afternoon tea, please do follow along. I'm going to leave all the recipes of everything that we are going to be doing down below. This is going to be a quintessentially British afternoon tea. So we're talking scones with jam and clotted cream. Finger sandwiches with the crusts cut off. It's quite Eastery as well. Guys. It is. We've got some Easter fondant fancies and cakes. We're going to do British English breakfast tea. It's going to be quite a nice affair. And if you aren't aware of what an afternoon tea is, traditionally you do have them in the UK. It's something that dates back to the 1900s. And it's essentially what very elegant upper class women and men, traditionally women, but obviously men yeah. as well, used to do in the afternoon to bridge the gap on a Sunday between their breakfast and their lunch slash dinner. So it's something you would have as a social affair. And you can have champagne. Yes, they're absolutely. You can do sparkling. I think they're called royal teas or high teas. Could be wrong. Um, but yeah, you can have a sparkling afternoon tea. We're just going to keep it classic because we have had a martini before we're filming this. And we will have one after. <laughs> and we will probably have one after. But um, yeah, I'm going to run you through everything that you are going to need to host your very own afternoon tea. If you are following along at home, do let me know how it turns out. Here we ready? Yeah. Let's go. So this is the afternoon tea stand that we ordered off of Amazon. It's actually plastic and it is fully uh, deconstructable. So it's perfect if you haven't got a lot of space in like your kitchen cupboards, you can just collapse it down. So I've just screwed it together. It's so easy. I'll leave it linked down below if anyone does want to purchase it. It's in like royal white. But traditionally with afternoon tea, you'd have your savoury items on the base layer. And then on the middle layer, you'd have your scones. And we're calling them scones, not scones, because traditional Queen's English is actually scones. Please don't hate me. And then the top layer, you'd have your little uh, petit pois cakes or small delicacies. So you'd have like macaroons, uh, French fancies, just anything really that's sweet to finish off your thing. So you'd traditionally start with the first layer, move on to the middle, and then finish with your top. So that's what we're going to do. So for our base layer, we are going to be making some sandwiches. Obviously, myself and Zara are vegetarian, so we're going to do vegetarian sandwiches. There's not going to be any like ham or salmon or anything like that. So we are doing cream cheese and cucumber. So that's going to be our first filling. Second filling is traditional egg mayonnaise. You would usually have cress, but we haven't really bothered. Um, so it's going to be cress. And then Zara's going to do a 21st century version with some avocado. <laughs> Toast. Avocado toast with like toast sandwich fingers because she doesn't like egg and she doesn't like cream cheese with cucumber So this is gonna be Zara's compromise. You do traditionally use white soft um, bread and you do cut the crusts off So they're gonna be our sandwich fillers and then this is the teapot that we got from John Lewis It was 14 pounds from John Lewis. I will link it down below. It's huge It's absolutely massive so you can fit a lot in there and um, traditionally you would do loose leaf English breakfast tea But we're just gonna use tea bags because it's just easy. <laughs> so yeah, this is our teapot. And then this is what we got from Waitrose yesterday. So these are the little miniature, are well, they just Waitrose Essential? Yeah, Waitrose 9 Easter Cakes. So we've got little mini cupcakes. They're just gonna go on top. And then we've got some Mr. Kiplin 8 Lemon Fancy. So we are cutting corners with a sweet treat, but we are gonna be making our very own scones. Keep on saying it's scones. So this is everything you are gonna need. I will again leave the recipe that we're gonna follow down below. It's a BBC good food recipe. So you're gonna need butter, vanilla, milk, salt, sugar, self-raising flour, a little bit of lemon juice, one beaten egg, bacon powder, and we're gonna do fruit scones. We need to get some sultanas, but they're just up here. And then to finish, clot of cream and jam. And we'll cross the bridge of which one goes first when we get there, because I know that sparks a big debate. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna wash our hands. Oh, oh, we're gonna wash our hands and put some aprons on if we're gonna do some bacon salt. And we'll be back with you in a second. Cool. Okay, so we need to do flour into our bowl. So we need uh, this one. So we're using self-raising flour, and it's three hundred and fifty grams. So do you want to weigh that in? Yeah. Do yeah. we have to sift it in? No. Oh, this is the first. Three fifty on oh, the dot. I'm really good at this. You are. And then we need to do salt and bacon powder. A quarter teaspoon. So just under. That of salt. So that of salt, and then I think we need one teaspoon of bacon powder. So my memory is like I see if I literally just read that. Tick. And then we just need to give that a little stir. 
and then we'll set that aside. And then we need to measure out um, 85 grams of butter and we put that into cubes. Yeah. So that's probably going to be like 10. So we need 85 grams. 300 years later. Oh. It's really important as well that the butter is cold um, so it like rubs in with the flour. Right, so then what we want to do is grab our ball here and then we can just use a knife with clean hands obviously and just block that up into small chunks into the ball like this and then we need to rub it in with our fingers and thumbs. You can of oh, course... Oh no. I was about to say, you can of course use um, a food processor if you want to. Rub, 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 rub a dub dub. And then as I was now gonna add three tablespoons of caster sugar into the mixing bowl. Actually, what you could do is get the saucepan out of here. Do you want the really small one? So Zara's gonna now warm the milk. I've never made scones before, but apparently you have to warm the milk. I'm not sure why. There's probably like a technical reason as to why, but I think it's 175 ml. Yeah. Okay, so now the milk is warm, Zara's just adding one teaspoon of vanilla extract and then a squeeze of lemon juice. And then I've just been doing the flour and butter mixture in here and that is looking good to go. Then I think we add one to the other and stir. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do now is preheat your oven to 200 degrees fan, 220 normal or gas mark four. Do you um, know that off the top of your head? Yeah. I know them roughly, yeah. How? Done a lot of bacon. I will leave the full recipe down below if I am wrong. Um, and you're gonna go and grab a flat bacon tray and pop this into your oven to preheat. To our bowl, we've got obviously all the flowers and butter. We just need to make a well, so like a, a bit where the liquid can. Can I say, I don't like the word well, I prefer pit. Make a pit in yes. your flour then, okay cool. Um, you can do these plain scones if you prefer. I love fruit scones, so we're gonna add some um, sultanas in this. Uh, the recipe actually doesn't use sultanas, but where it's gonna fall, it's like a good handful in. We're gonna do... That's... Yeah, perfect. Lovely. Okay, Enjoy and then... Just yeah, this in. pour all in. And Doris is pouring in the warm milk into the pit. Traditionally, you're supposed to use a pastry knife for this, just to ensure that it's all done, but we're using a stainless steel bowl and I don't wanna scratch it, so I'm just using a wooden spoon. But, um, traditionally, you can use milk or you can use egg to glaze the scones, but um, we're going to use an egg because we have one. Um, and then this has came together nicely. So then we need to tip this out onto a floured work surface and like roll it out until it's quite, you need quite a thick scone. We don't have scone cutters, so we're going to use glass. We're going to do flour on a work surface, just like this. You don't need a lot of flour, just as enough to coat it like that, to just tip your dough onto your work surface like this, and then you just want to grab your hands and get them. Grab your hands. Get your hands grab involved your hands. <laughs> into the scone mix. Don't over knead it, whatever you do, otherwise you get a really, really tough scone. But you just want to make sure that it's all combined and everything's evenly distributed. Okay, so we've got the preheated oven um, bacon tray on the side. Um, we don't have cookie cutters, so we're going to use a glass. If you do have cutters, by all means use them. But what we're going to do is pop um, your glass or your cutter into a little bit of flour, press down and cut through like so. And that is the kind of depth you want for your scone. And then pop that onto Ooh, your tray. They're good. They do, don't they? I just... And then what Zara's gonna do here is just brush the tops with a little bit of egg. Okay, and then these just need to go into the oven for 10 minutes at 200 degrees until they're nice and golden brown on top. Okay, now we're going to start assembling our afternoon tea. So Zara's has taken the little um, Mr. Kipling French fancies. Of course, you can, if you're going to really go to town on this, you can, of course, like, make your own petit pois. Um, petit pois? I think they're petit they small cakes. Macaroons. Yeah, they do. They're a lot of money. So basically, we're going to start putting our treats on top. So we're going to do the cakes and the little lemon fondant fancies. Okay, now it's time to tackle the sandwiches. So, Laura's just toasting two of her slices for avocado toast. This is very much a millennial afternoon tea. Right, don't you? No, no, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and then I'm gonna do this one for my egg sandwiches, and then I'm gonna do another one for my cream cheese and cucumber. Ok, 
okay, we're now going to start brewing our tea. So we've got our milk and our big teapot and we've just popped our tea bags into the teapot. And then we need to decant some jam and some cream into little ramekins. Okay, so we've just took the scones out of the oven. Look how amazing they look. <gasps> wow. Okay, so we just need to cool ever so slightly and then we're gonna transfer them to a coolant rack. Cesaro's just popping some jam into a little ramekin and I'm using some of this Rodas Cornish Clotted Cream. We're gonna spark the cream Cornish Devonshire jam debate in a second, but I'm just gonna pop some of that in here. Okay, so we are gonna do a bit of a educational history lesson here. When, when it comes to cream tea, more traditionally afternoon tea, when it comes to actually scones, and what you adorn your scone with completely depends on how you how you like to consume your scones. So the Devonshire way to do scones is to first do cream and then put jam on top, which is the way that I do it. So I do it the Devonshire way, which is what you would do, because you're from Devon. Yeah. So Zara's actually from Plymouth, but Plymouth comes into, is it the borough? No. P Plymouth's in Devon. It's the, what, the county, the county, the county of Durham, so Kev County, um, Devon, is the way that we would naturally do it, but the Cornish way of doing it is to do jam first and then top it with cream. But I think that maybe I do that. I do can't you? think because in my head, I put the more, I would forget the ingredients, mm. I would put the more spreadable thing first. So, what would you do? Else, that's like me doing my avocado toast by putting tomatoes on and spreading on avocado. That, that doesn't work. But they both spread. No, jam so, spreads easier. So, you do jam then cream? I don't know, but now I'm really going to overthink it when we're out there. Cream tea and afternoon tea are two separate things as well. So cream tea would naturally be just tea with scones, whereas an afternoon tea has your sandwiches and cakes as well. So that's a little bit of history for you guys. But enough of the history, our scones are cooling now. I just need to put some ice and sugar on and set the table outside. So that's what we're gonna do now. finish our scones, we're just doing a little light dusting of ice and sugar. Just done two, because that's all we're having for now. So this is our little afternoon tea set up. Look how amazing this looks. So we've got our little cakes up top, got some scones, the finger sandwiches, and our tea and milk. And we brought some of the inside plants outside to make it look a little bit nicer. Doesn't that look amazing? Right, so let's start. You do your little avocados. I'm gonna do an egg sandwich. Apparently traditional dining etiquette is to fold your napkin towards you with the fold inwards. <laughs> so it's like if I did it properly. <laughs> so you fold it inwards and then when you're done you lay it away from you and then traditionally also you dab your mouth. Yeah, I do that anyway though. Like that. Okay, so back to the scone debate. We're gonna do cream then jam, and then jam then cream, and see which one Zara prefers. So we're gonna go in. It's always gotta be Cornish. Right. Okay, so we have cream then jam, and jam then cream. Personally, I'm fully like this. I don't really know, I don't really know what happened there. That's that's not even Devonshire or Cornish. That's just dirty. That's not. <laughs> right, we're gonna go on to the taste test. They are beautiful. Oh my god. Mmm. 
Okay, so that is our afternoon tea. Well, we've spent the afternoon outside and the sun is just starting to set now. So I really hope you have enjoyed this. If you're gonna do it along at home, it's a lovely thing to do on a Sunday with your friends, your family, or just anyone, or even do it by yourself. It's a lovely thing to do. Obviously, we're not allowed to get out of the house, so you can bring the outside in. But thank you so much for watching everything that I've mentioned, recipes, things that we've used will be linked down below, down below, down below in the description box, so you can follow along at home. Thank you so much for watching that, as always, and I'll catch you guys very soon. Bye for now.